Part three is going to be similar to the other two parts. Lots of example questions. If you haven't read the book, I strongly suggest you do that before going through this video. Here's our first question. Well, this one is similar to the behavior of almost all materials. If you decrease their temperature, the object will decrease in size, or in other words, it'll become more dense, it'll contract. Try this one. So this is where it starts to get interesting. If you decrease the temperature of water below 4 degrees Celsius, it actually increases the volume, meaning it becomes less dense. That is a very strange behavior. Really, very few other substances on Earth have this behavior. So water is very unique in that sense. So we're going to look through the interesting properties of thermal expansion for water. We know that ice has to be less dense than water. This goes back to our discussion of buoyancy. If an object is floating in a liquid, then it must be less dense on average than the liquid itself. We always see ice floating on the surface like this, so ice must be less dense. So at some point, you have to go from a more dense liquid to a less dense solid. Well, most of that is taken up or taken care of in the change of phase. But the focus of this video is not the phase change, it's actually the point right before the liquid turns into a solid. Here I'm showing a chart of density versus temperature for water. It's got a wide temperature range from 100 Celsius down to below 0 Celsius. For liquid water, we're in the 100 to 0 degrees Celsius range, and then below that, that's the ice phase. At 100 degrees, water it has the lowest density of the liquid phase, or in other words, it occupies the most volume. As you reduce the temperature, the volume decreases as well, which is why the density increases. And that's the general behavior of most substances. The lower you make their temperature, the more density increases or the less volume they occupy, or you could say they contract. So the density continues to increase as the temperature is lowered all the way until just about the zero point here. And then there's a sudden drop in the density. So the ice phase has a noticeably less, noticeably smaller density, less than the liquid phase ever was. All right, now the interesting behavior right here, it's all just the same as any other substance on earth really. It's right here that all the interesting stuff happens. So we're going to zoom in on that area. And the density plot, you can't tell because we're so zoomed out, but the density plot looks like that in between 10 degrees and 0 degrees Celsius. So it turns out that there's a peak at 4 degrees Celsius. That peak means the density is the greatest for water at four degrees Celsius, not at the zero degrees during the where the phase change happens. This is very strange because really very, very few substances on Earth have this behavior. They all have a straight shot of increasing density with decreasing temperature for a given phase. I do need to point out something here. I am showing you a plot of density compared to temperature. When you show this plot, you have an increasing curve here with a peak that looks like that, a maximum peak. If you remember from the book, their plot looked different. In fact, it was this one right here. They had a dip here, so they have a minimum. The reason why is because they're plotting volume with respect to temperature where I was showing density. So it's they're the inverse of each other. Density, where density has a peak, volume has a low point. 
it's the same idea though. It's just, you gotta twist your mind a little bit. So higher temperature water is up here. So the volume is decreasing with decreasing temperature where I was saying density was increasing with decreasing temperature. So like I said, they're inverse. At 40 degrees, you have your lowest volume, which is why I say you have your maximum density. So that back and forth relationship can get a little confusing. You have to kind of pause and really think about it. So below four degrees Celsius, the volume goes up, which is why I was saying the density goes down. So when you get to questions on homework, try to keep those straight. Are they asking about density or volume? And it can get confusing, so it's good to pause and really work through it. If it helps, just have a graph like this in front of you when you're answering those questions. These plots are useful, but all they're doing is describing the observed behavior. They're not actually explaining anything. To explain why this is happening, you actually have to zoom in on the individual water molecules. and You have to look at the individual molecules that make up the liquid as a whole. That's not easy to do. Obviously, I can't really just show you that. So to give you some way of visually representing this, I'll use the same simulation from before. This is the same simulation I showed you in video one, where I was trying to represent temperature as the average kinetic energy of the molecules. I'm looking at water again here. And if you look at the temperature, it's at 13 degrees Celsius, which means I'm above the freezing point, so I'm in the liquid phase. This time I wanna watch the molecules as I get close to the freezing point to zero and then even below. I'm removing energy, which is decreasing the temperature. Okay, right about there. I don't know if you noticed. Maybe I'll exaggerate it here. See how the molecules are starting to actually spread out? Let's pause it right there. So they're definitely taking up more space now that I'm below freezing here. You see how there's kind of these open ring-like structures? Okay, that is a unique property of water. Most substances do not do this. This is why ice is less dense. This is why water below four degrees Celsius is actually less dense than above four degrees Celsius, slightly above four degrees Celsius. So here's a diagram of that. When water is reduced below four degrees Celsius, it starts to form these ice crystals. So it's these open crystals that actually spread out and cause the liquid to take up more space, even though it's still in the liquid phase. Here they mention ice crystals in nearly frozen liquid water. So this only happens below four degrees Celsius. That's why four degrees Celsius is actually the maximum density because that's before these uh, open crystals start to form. Below four degrees Celsius, the open crystals form, which actually spreads out the volume, makes it take up larger volume and decreases the density. Now that you have some idea of why water has this unique property, let's look at some application in the real world. Here, this image shows a small pond that started to ice over in the winter. You can see a layer of ice has formed on the surface. Why is it that water forms ice on the surface and not from the ground up? Part of the explanation starts with the high heat capacity of water. Water can store a lot of energy and it has to lose a lot of energy before it changes temperature. So even a relatively small body of water like this, there's a, it's always gonna lag behind the temperature of the air because the air changes temperature really easily. So let's say we have a body of water that's not frozen yet, and the water is 10 degrees Celsius, but the air above has reached zero degrees Celsius. The water at the surface here is in contact with the air, and when you have two objects of different temperatures contacting each other, there's gonna be a heat transfer. That means that the water is gonna lose energy to the colder air. So energy always goes from the 
higher temperature to the lower temperature. That causes the water to cool right at the surface. So let's say at the surface there's a layer that's cooled down to 8 degrees Celsius. I'm just kind of making up these numbers. There's nothing specifically important about the number I chose. Well, if this layer has cooled to 8 degrees Celsius, it's more dense. It's contracted. More dense water means less buoyancy. Or in other words, this layer of water is going to sink. Okay, well now that this is on the bottom, that leaves 10 degree water on the top which is again in contact with the air, and so it'll start to cool. So you're gonna form another layer of cooler water, which becomes more dense, and again has less buoyancy, so that's gonna sink. Okay, well, that leaves another exposed layer of 10 degrees Celsius, which is gonna cool. Eventually, that's gonna drop. I think you're starting to see the pattern here. This is going to continue. This cooler water is going to build up at the bottom, and the top is going to keep cooling down and adding more cooler water at the bottom, till eventually the whole thing is the same temperature. Okay, well then you have 8 degrees Celsius water in contact, so another layer is going to cool off. That's going to become less buoyant and sink. And I think you see the pattern this whole process is going to continue over and over again until the whole body of water is 4 degrees Celsius. Well, at 4 degrees Celsius, the surface here is still cooling, so you're going to get a layer that's, let's say, 3 degrees Celsius. The uniqueness of this situation, though, is 3 degrees Celsius is actually less dense than 4 degrees Celsius. We said that that was the maximum density right here. Or in other words, the volume of this layer has expanded, so it's more buoyant. So this layer of water is actually going to want to float on the warmer, slightly warmer water below. So it does. It just stays there at the surface. Well, the cooling is going to continue because the air is less. So eventually you might see something like this, where the very top layer is actually cooled to 2 degrees and a little bit lower, has it's still cooling, that, that cooling is starting to spread down. But 2 degrees Celsius is more buoyant than 3 degrees Celsius, or in other words, less dense. So it's just going to hover at the top there. Eventually, you'll end up with something kind of like this, where the surface water will reach zero and actually start to freeze and turn into ice, and you'll have some colder water below, but all that water is floating on the slightly warmer water below because this is actually less dense. That's a weird thing with water. It's just, it's really weird. Like I've said a few times, water is one of the few substances on Earth that does this. Okay, well, this is an explanation of why ice always forms on the surface and not on the bottom. Okay, well, the air can change, fluctuate temperatures, so that could get even colder. This is why there's an image like this in your book. So the, if the surface air is colder, then it'll continue to cool off the ice and the water below. And this layer of ice can actually extend and grow, but it always goes from the top down. And the bottom is always going to be about 4 degrees Celsius which is cold for you and I, but for the wildlife that's accustomed to that, that's, that's acclimated to that, that's not so bad for them. What's interesting is, we'll discuss this more in chapter 16, but if you get a layer of snow on top here, snow is actually a pretty good insulator. Ice isn't very good, but snow is, and so that snow can actually insulate the liquid below, so there's less chance that the ice will thicken. Okay, well, let's see if this is making sense with some more questions. Try this one. The trick to these questions is always keeping volume versus density straight in your mind. 
zero degrees is that phase change point. So it's reached its maximum volume below four degrees Celsius. So if you increase it slightly above that, the volume is actually going to decrease, meaning it's going to get more dense. Okay, so that's why maybe having a chart like this is handy. You don't need the book's little figures on there, but something like that for volume. So then you can just quickly look, okay, if I'm at zero degrees and I increase slightly, that actually decreases the volume if I, if I increased in temperature. Okay, it's not until I hit four degrees that an increase in temperature results in an increase in volume. And then just keep in mind that it's flipped if you have density. So let's look at a density question. Ice has a lower density than water because ice Uh, it's that open structured crystal effect that I was trying to show with the simulation. So they actually open up and spread out as the as they form little ice crystals near the freezing point. Now hopefully this one's pretty obvious now. Ice always forms at the surface first. Okay, this question is commonly missed. A lot of um, students go with zero because in our head it makes sense that the freezing point is zero so doesn't all the water have to be to zero and it doesn't work that way. It actually has to be at four degrees here. That's so that when the surface water gets colder than four degrees, it'll float on the surface and it'll continue to cool off. Otherwise, as the water cools, it just sinks. And so the warmer water stays on top until you hit four degrees Celsius. Uh, this is kind of a final check. I've asked about volume quite a bit. So if you're slightly lower than four degrees, you actually have more volume. I hope you found this interesting. I personally find this fascinating. There's real world consequences to this. If lakes were to freeze from the bottom up, they would be more likely to freeze solid, which would obviously kill all the marine and plant life. So that would completely change the marine ecosystem that we know. This video is the end of our discussion of chapter 15.